Leo Feldman, thank you very much. All right, you are taking a live look right now in Moscow on the 219th day of the war in Ukraine. A surreal scene is unfolding right before our eyes. It is a concert uh, taking place right now. It looks like there are some guest speakers wow. in celebration of Vladimir Putin declaring that four occupied Ukrainian regions are now part of Russia. That's what he's saying. Ukraine, of course, uh, saying that is not the case. Putin saying Moscow would protect the newly incorporated regions by, quote, all means available. The White House did release a statement this morning in it reads in part, quote, the United States condemns Russia's fraudulent attempt today to annex sovereign Ukrainian territory. Russia is violating international national law, trampling on the United Nations Charter and showing its contempt for peaceful nations everywhere. Keep in mind, the U.S. had called this referendum a sham election, yeah. uh, although a di totally different scene in Moscow where celebrations are ensuing. Hours before the signing, hours before Putin made the major announcement, Russia unleashing its biggest bombardment in weeks, more than two dozen people in a humanitarian aid convoy killed. Shelby Wilder is live on the ground in Kyiv today, uh, and she's got the reaction and response from Ukraine. Shelby? Well, hello. As you mentioned, um, Russia has just been unveiling on tax across Ukraine really in the last 24 hours. That video you played was showing Zaporizhia, where 25 civilians from a humanitarian convoy were killed. But the, the real news here today is that Ukrainians are waking up and being told by Vladimir Putin that approximately 15 percent of Ukrainian territory is now a part of Russia. Uh, Putin made this speech this afternoon, signed the official decree that four regions in eastern Ukraine were now a part of Russia. Uh, the U.S. and the EU have condemned this illegal land grab. We should note that Russia first annexed Ukrainian territory in 2014 when they illegally invaded Crimea. And now they claim to have ownership over uh, Zaporizhia, Kherson, Luhansk and Donetsk. We should also note that these regions are not under full Russian occupation and control. We've seen in the last few weeks that Ukraine's military continues to push into these occupied territories and are making steady gains. But in a speech today made by Putin, he said that this was the will of millions of people. He declared Western elites to be the enemy of Russia, saying that the West was trying to destroy Russia. He also claimed uh, that the people living in these regions were now Russian citizens forever. Uh, in regards to Zelensky, we saw an address last night. He said that Russia will not get any new territory in Ukraine. He also said that tomorrow is another day of our struggle, and it's another day on the path to victory. Now, what this really signifies is that Russian President Vladimir Putin is not interested in negotiations. Zelensky has said that if Russia moved to annex these territories, it would cut all diplomatic ties. So Putin is not interested in negotiating, and he's seemingly not backing down. And so the question is, where does this leave us now in this war if negotiations are no longer an option and Russia is claiming that eastern Ukraine is now a part of the Russian Federation? As we see the celebration unfolding in Moscow at this time, Shelby, tell me about the Ukrainian application to NATO. What do we know about it at this time? What's the uh, significance behind it? Well, you know, I mean, Ukraine has had incredible support from the West. There's really been a united front in regards to the response with this illegal land grab and annexation. Um, you know, Ukraine is con determined to continue fighting on the battlefront. Um, they are using all the Western support that they have. And Zelensky has said that they are determined to reclaim every inch of territory that has been taken by Russia in this war. Again, the EU has condemned this. The U.S. has condemned it. They said that there will be a new round of sanctions against Russia because of this move. And we're really going to see what statements uh, really unfold in the coming days following the celebration that's currently taking place in Moscow's Red Square. At the time, Ukraine applying now for a fast-tracked NATO membership. We know they're not currently uh, NATO members. It would really impact uh, how this war would enter a new phase if they were to be yes. accepted. Shelby Wilder live in Kiev with the latest. Shelby, thanks so much. Thank you.